We want to welcome into the studio Dr. Joni Beekler with Prairie Lakes Cancer Center. And today we're going to talk about prostate cancer because September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. So good morning, Dr. Beekler. Good morning. So let's talk prostates. Other than skin cancer, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. One in six men will get prostate cancer. Now for women, it's breast. One in eight women will get breast cancer. And so I one time said to my husband, it's about the same. And he said, no, he said it isn't because women have two breasts. Men have one prostate. It's more common. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Most common cancer in men, we need to talk about screening. Before we talk about screening, let's talk about prevention. You can't really prevent prostate cancer. You really can't. Uh, your risk for having prostate cancer is being a man and getting older. So those are you know, a couple things you can't really help. But there are some things that can decrease your risk. And the things that decrease your risk are the same things that you hear over and over uh, about other healthcare issues. So there are things like eat a healthy diet, low in red meat, low in processed food, low in sugar, eat lots of fruits, especially sick citrus, vegetables, soybeans, fish, limit your fat, exercise, have a good weight. Of course, don't smoke. Please don't smoke. Drink coffee and green tea. So interestingly, they find that drinking coffee actually decreases the risk of fatal prostate cancer by a certain percentage. So again, my husband was happy to hear that because he gets up in the morning, stiggers for the stiggers for the coffee a maker. A man after but, my right? own heart, I So do you too. can't really prevent <laughs> prostate cancer, but you can do things that decrease the risk. But we should talk about screening. So it used to be that any time you hit 50, well, we're going to we're going to check a PSA. We we need to screen and they're going they were going by age. We don't really go by age anymore because there's some 50-year-olds who are very unhealthy. They have a lot of other health issues and then there's some 75-year-olds that are really healthy. So you can't really it's a number. Age is just a number. That's the truth. You got to look at the person. What's their medical history? What's their performance status? So we say that if you are 50 years old and the life expectancy is 10 years, then you could get a PSA checked. If you are 45 years old and you have ha- you have a relative, first degree relative, meaning a brother, a dad, uncle, grand- grandpa, if you have one that they call it a first degree relative, you should start getting screened at age 45. If you have more than one, you should start getting screened at age 40. So screening being two things, you can do a PSA test, PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. It's a little enzyme that spits out by the prostate and then we can measure it in your blood. So it is only made by the prostate, not your liver, your kidneys, your bone marrow, nothing, only the prostates. Mine is zero, yours is zero too. So the PSA, it is not a great screening tool because it can be elevated for a couple different reasons. As men get older, their prostates tend to get bigger. You got a bigger prostate, guess what? You're making more PSA. Certain activities, riding bike, infections, different things can make your PSA go up. But once it gets above four, then we think we should maybe do a biopsy. The other screening test is something called a digital rectal exam, which basically means your provider is going to put their finger into your rectum and feel the back part of your prostate. So... Now, Dr. Beekler, we want to know about if your screening comes back positive, what's the next step? So if your PSA is rising or your exam is abnormal, then you get a referral to urology. Urology can do a few things. Sometimes they will do a prostate MRI right away just to see can they see anything can they see a nodule or a lesion in the prostate or they might just take you straight to biopsy dr maxwell who is our fabulous urologist at prairie lakes he would do a biopsy the pathology report comes back you go in to visit with him and he will talk about next steps sometimes that next step might be more imaging or more staging studies it could be a bone scan it could be something called a uh PSMA PET scan, which is specific for prostate cancer. So he'll talk about further imaging or further workup. There's something called a decipher test. A decipher test is really a great tool that we have. So a decipher test looks at the genetics of the cancer. So not the patient, not the gentleman's 23 chromosomes, not those. We're actually sending the cancer to a lab to have the genetics 
of the cancer evaluated. And so then we get back a score that says this looks low risk, intermediate, or high risk, and that really helps to guide our treatment. So Dr. Maxwell might start the ball rolling and order some of these tests. He usually has a general discussion with the patient saying these are your options. Options are going to depend upon First of all, how long do we think this patient is going to live? So again, if you have someone that's pretty unhealthy or has a lot of trips around the sun, maybe the best option is observation. Prostate cancer can be slow growing. If you've got a low risk prostate cancer and you're 94 years old, guess what? You are probably, to put it simply, probably going to die from something else and there's no point in pursuing treatment. Otherwise, then he'll maybe talk about surgery or talk about radiation, hormone therapy. And then if a patient says, absolutely not, I'm never going to have surgery, then he doesn't even send them for a surgical consult. But if they're open to that, then he will send them to surgery, send them to me if they're open to that. It's about what the patient is comfortable with. And I think knowledge is power. So if I had a relative who had prostate cancer, I'd say visit with everybody. Go visit with a surgeon, see what he has to say. Visit with a radiation oncologist. Knowledge is power. And then you make the decision that's right for you. Usually both surgery and radiation carry similar risks of, or not risks, but they carry similar chances of cure. The difference between them is level of comfort for what the patient likes to do and side effects. So this it, it has to be what the patient is comfortable with. And like I said, I think it's good to talk with everybody and then make a decision. I always tell patients, I'm not here to talk you into or out of anything. I'm here to give you information so you can make the decision that's right for you. And then I tell them, when you make the decision, you name it and you claim it. Don't go home and not sleep and toss and turn and think, should I have done this? Should I have done that? Nope, this is the decision you made. This is the one that was right for you. And then you forge ahead. What is radiation oncology? Radiation is a way to kill and cure cancer using high energy radiation. We're talking about prostate cancer today. So when we treat prostate cancer with radiation, the first thing we do is we start with called, it's called a simulation. We have you lay on a CT table. We put you in the treatment position, which by the way, is very comfortable. You're on your back. You have something under your knees, pillow under your head. And we do a CT scan with no contrast. I take that CT scan and I create a plan for you. One size does not fit all. We don't lay you on the treatment table and just open it up and full bore give you radiation. We have to create a plan specific for your anatomy and your disease. We start with a simulation. We take those images, create a plan. Radiation, it, it is a daily Monday through Friday treatment, and it's usually a, usually 28 treatments. So we're talking almost six weeks of daily visits to the cancer center. Now you're not there long. I tell people you're in the building about 30 minutes. So you come in, you say hello to Ruth and Barb at the front desk and you have a little chat with them. Then you wait your turn. They take you back. You have to change your clothes up on the treatment table. You're on the table about 10 minutes. So the treatment itself really does not take very long. Then the treatment is done and you're down and off the table and out the door. So I tell people 30 minutes, 10 minutes on the table. Mondays, you're going to be there a little bit longer because Monday is your doctor day. So like it or not, every Monday you have to visit with me. And we talk about the side effects and how to manage them. Radiation is a, it's what we call a local treatment. So chemotherapy, which we're not talking about now, and uh, is something that gets injected or taken as a pill and it goes through your whole body. It goes through your whole body looking for cancer cells to kill. Side effects can also be through your whole body. With radiation, we are only treating the pelvis and the side effects are only in the pelvis, with the exception of one. Radiation makes you tired, and part of that is because of the way the radiation interacts with your body, but also because you have to be here every day, Gandhi, and that kind of wears on you saying, okay, my appointment's at 10, and it's what time, and I have to leave, and in the wintertime, that adds an extra layer of issues, especially if you're coming from Sisseton or Ortonville, then we have roads and weather to think about. Radiation can make you tired. Otherwise, radiation, side effects are in the pelvis what's in the pelvis? Prostate. Yes. We hope the side effect we cause there is that we kill the cancer cells and cure the cancer, but otherwise it's bladder and rectum. So radiation to the pelvis, it can affect your bowel movements and it can affect how much and how often you urinate. 
These side effects, they come on slowly. You probably get through the first week or two, not really notice too much of anything. And then so slowly you start to notice these things. So they come on slowly. Guess how they are going to go away. They're going to go away slowly. How you're going to react to the radiation is anybody's guess. I have no way to know how you're going to react because some men, they charge all the way through and don't notice too much of anything. Other people, they're struggling from the first week. So I like to say, hope for the best, expect the worst, you're going to get something in between month or three down the road, we expect that you're going to be urinating the same, that your bowel movements are going to return to normal. So we expect that you're going to return to your pre-radiation status, hopefully with a low PSA and a cured cancer. The fact remains that the lower the stage and the lower the risk of prostate cancer, the more likely it is to be cured. So if you come to me and you're a stage three or four, your chances of being cured are going to be a lot less than a stage one or a stage two. So cancer, prostate cancer is common. Prostate cancer is curable. And since I have come to Prairie Lakes, I treat more prostate cancer than anything. That is the cancer that I treat most. We treat a lot of prostate cancer, and I think we're good at it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Joni Beekler.